I recall in my video for 2016's Ballad in Blood, I claimed that Rogero Diodato in his earlier film House on the Edge of the Park, released in 1980, he was trying to hold open the cultural gates pried by Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. They have a similar title, share a lead actor in David A. Hess, and the narrative is very reminiscent. There is a source which apparently writes that House on the Edge of the Park was intended as a partial remake of Last House on the Left, which does make a lot of sense. That David A. Hess, due to his presence in these films, every time I see his face, say, just when looking at his Wikipedia entry, I feel a potent sense of disgust. Sign of a good actor, I think. House on the Edge of the Park features something resembling a home invasion, although it begins as an invitation. Two mechanics named Alex and Ricky, Alex happens to be portrayed by David A. Hess and is an apparent serial killer, are welcomed into the home of Gloria. Lorraine Desell, who I always remember from Lindsay's classic Cannibal Ferox. They have been brought there by Tom and Lisa, and also attending the party are Howard and Glenda. Now, what's interesting about this film is that Alex and Ricky begin their violent hostility after they believe that they are being toyed with by the rich people. Ricky is humiliated, Alex is teased, and so they decide to really escalate the situation and turn it into, well, a remake of The Last House on the Left. But in keeping with Italian horror or exploitation films having needlessly complicated and convoluted plot gravity, events may be going exactly as this group of high society posh cosmopolitan masochists intend. No, it isn't for their pleasure, but rather a result of their ruthless patience. Just like in The Last House on the Left, someone wants their revenge at any costs. I noticed some people calling this film a harrowing masterpiece on a particular comment section, and I don't know if I would go quite that far. Well, yes and no. Cinematically, this isn't much to write home about. Diodato and cinematographer Sergio de Offizi did much better work together photographically on Cannibal Holocaust. This feels flat. If this was the point, then I can, then I can soon appreciate this film as a nightmarish simulation of intense extreme violence, a demonstration of horrifying traumatic events not alike and possibly aspiring to what was intended by Pasolini in Salo, although, as I inferred, not nearly as interesting aesthetically, technically as Salo either, though that's Pasolini. If you were trapped, trapped, confined, you know, in a cinema viewing house on the edge of the park, it might be easier to both appreciate and to feel utterly repulsed by it. Well, one experiences the full affect of the film, the claustrophobic suffocation of Alex and Ricky's psychotic counterparty as a cinematic voyage, one of the most vividly potent and undeniably affecting bad trips in the history of this medium. Meanwhile, one who is not on board, forced to sit through it in the theatre, will be more convinced than ever that films such as this ought not to be made. How can anyone want others to see this film? How could any filmmaker unleash this madness and suffering onto the silver screen? For those interested in extreme experiences, the frontiers of conscious processing, experiences which one will never forget, cinema which makes one feel as though they are on the edge of existence, give House on the Edge of the Park a whirl, but don't say I did not warn you about the violence and carnage within the film, if I hadn't made that clear already, let me do so now. This film is very, very gross and disturbing, do be careful with it, don't watch it in the living room, you know. So that's our Jared Diodato for you all. This will be the last Diodato film I'll discuss for this little min minute retrospective series here, and probably the last Diodato picture I will ever discuss for FOTD. I'm done with it. This was a lot of fun though. I'm glad I embarked upon this. If I have any final words on Diodato, it is that between Jungle Holocaust, especially, and Fandom of Death, he was very creatively charged. All horror splatter affairs, mind you, and apparently he did not even really like horror as a genre at all, preferring realism. However, he would claim that his films were still realist in their own way, which, hmm, maybe one or two. I don't know, Fratello. But it was fun. A positive experience. And if I have any final thoughts to share about House in the Edge of the Park, it is this. If you're going to sit through Andy Warhol's Empire, you might as well sit through Rogero Diodato's House on the Edge of the Park.